Hey, what's up, CV Maniacs? This is Militia, and I'm here with, you guessed it, this is Ariel from The Little Mermaid. I don't know about you, but I'm totally loving your outfit. So, did you put this together yourself? I did, yes. How long did it take you? Uh, a couple of weeks. A couple of weeks? Okay, so you made the tail from scratch? This is all you? I did. I sewed in each individual um, sequin, and I did. I, I sewed everything and painted everything, and yes. Now I gotta say it's it's kind of tricky to walk around in your costume. So how are you getting around today? I invented something called the mermaid shuffle. Down in Florida we have the stingray shuffle, but here we have the mermaid shuffle, and I have I have to hike up my my fin and shuffle. Very bad on the back. Very. Bad. It sounds complex. Yes, it's very complex. <laughs> well, I mean, props to you for turning it out, and m might I say that your shells look amazing. Thank you very much. <laughs> You know, they have a mermaid parade in Coney Island. I heard about this today. Oh, thank you. She's got a group and everything. Okay, so tell me about your group, uh, Black Lily Cosplay. Yes, uh, we're a group down in Central Florida, and um, we dress up and go together to Ren Fests and con conventions, and we also uh, volunteer at kids' hospitals and go in there and make the kids happy. So. Oh, that's so awesome. Thank you. So you came all the way from Florida to come to this particular anime convention? I did. I mean, I'm leaving also on a cruise tomorrow to go into New England, but um, I did convince my mother to bring me early so I could come to this. Oh, that's so awesome. Was that your mom that gave the card? I love that. She's like your manager slash agent, like yeah. looking out. She was like, bam, here's the card. Well, cool. Thank you. What's your real name? Samantha. Okay, Samantha, thank you so much uh, for the interview. You look fabulous. And uh, me and Ariel, hanging at the convention. Peace. All right, you guys. I'm standing here with Misaku Rocks. She is a graphic novelist. Um, and we're standing in front of some of her creations uh, right here. Uh, you want to talk a little bit about uh, your work? Yes, one of them is a biker girl. It's published uh, by Hyperion, 2006. It was like my first book. So my style was, uh, you know, I was trying to find my style. And I'm using a Japanese calligraphy brush. So it's a little bit different from other kind of comics, too. And this is more like a shy Japanese girl who's transformed to a super sexy biker hero. Oh, and yeah. she's, uh, yeah, she's going to defeat a bike gang. That's the story. And uh, try to find her first love. That's the story. So this is uh, my latest book. It just published uh, by Henry Holt uh, last weekend. And it's more, you know, since I drew the story about more Japanese girls who live in Japan or, you know, maybe move to America like me. But since I live in America, I just felt like, ah, oh, why don't I make a story about, you know, more American kids who live in here? Because it's more natural for readers to feel sympathy to the characters. So I visited the high schools in, you know, Middle East and also New York kind of, you know, to just ask about their love relationship or like a relationship with the parents. So thanks to them, I could make this story. And this story is about Jermaine, who's 17 years old girl, just like, you know, anybody who on the street. But she has a world famous detective parents. But one of, uh, I mean, father died a long time ago. So since then, she's always acting like a detective, you know, sneaking around the people's business. And she has a sidekick partners, Andy and Travis, super cute boys, you know. I mean, you can tell it's going to be a love triangle story, too. So this is a story about uh, they're going to try to find a school mystery, but a plus it's about more, you know, it's not just about detective. It's more like uh, those kids going to try to find their own future, you know, more like because people want to go to maybe college or maybe I don't know what I want to do in the future. So it's kind of, I, I wanted to make a book so far, like inspire kids to find their, you know, like a dream or like kind of challenge yourself. And it's going to be a volume, I mean, series too. So I'm making a volume two right now. Okay. It's going to be, yeah. Volume two. Yes, and it's a really fashionable book too. So just <laughs> come to check it out. I wish you every bit of luck in the world, yes. success, everything. You're well on your way. She does rock, right? Totally rock. <laughs> CV Mania, this is Militia coming to you from the New York Anime Festival. I'm here with Tony Oliver, who's like an icon in the anime world. Please tell our viewers a little bit about what you do. 
Well, to be an icon, that means you're old, so I don't know about that. But no, um, I'm a voice actor. I've been a voice actor for 25 years. Uh, I've done, uh, I started with a show called Robotech years ago, mm -hmm. and I continued on. I've produced shows. I was a uh, head writer for Morning Man from Power Rangers. And, um, and now I, I mostly direct anime. Uh, I'm currently directing, uh, just finished directing Gurren Lagann for the Sci-Fi Channel. And, and I keep doing voice work, and um, I work on shows like Naruto and Bleach and, and other shows like that. So can you please let me know, like, when you first started out, like, what was it that attracted you initially to anime? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, I was, uh, I was a, a, a stage actor. I started as a stage actor in Los Angeles, which is a, a no-win situation at the time. There's not a lot of theater. Stage in, in L.A. Okay, was it like theater, musical theater? Mostly musicals. Yeah, I sing. And, um, uh, and Uh-oh, don't let me know that. I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> And <laughs> oh no, I shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> He's blushing. Um, the uh, I, I I was I was needing work, and I answered an ad in one of the trade papers, um, looking for uh, over 18 actors that could sound under 18 and that had experience. So I, I went to the audition. I lied through my teeth and told them I'd done it before. And uh, yeah, and uh, I happened to land a very small part in a in a live action Louis Mal film, um, just just replacing some of the French. And uh, that turned out to be kind of a paid audition for me. Uh, which, and they gave me a part right after that of uh, an anime. It was my first anime I ever even s I, I saw that I was aware of called The Sea Prince and the Fire Child. And that ended up broadcasting on TV. And uh, the producers of Robotech sought me out and asked me to audition and gave me the part of Rick Hunter. And that's kind of how I started. So I didn't really go seek anime. Anime kind of sought me out. Uh, came to you like it was a reverse calling. Okay, so when you started working on Robotech, did you know at the time that it was going to become this huge part of the anime world? Uh, no, not really. Um, for, anime wasn't very big back then. It was really kind of small, the, the, the old stereotype of the anime uh, uh, fan. Um, that's pretty much what it was like and not very big. So, no, I really didn't know. And, and frankly, I was a young actor, uh, thrilled to have a job, uh, thrilled to have a series. I'd never done a series before. Um, and so I was really concentrating on, on not screwing it up. <laughs> um, but it, when the episode came around where Roy Foker dies in it, um, I, I was stunned because they don't let us read ahead of time. We find this stuff out in the studio as we're performing the part. Uh, and I was stunned. I'd never seen a show, an animated show in America where somebody died. And that's when I started to get an inkling we had something different. Uh, the producer, Carl Masek, wrote us all a letter kind of explaining what his vision was and that's when I really realized that, that, that people were really taking to this and this was something different. It is amazing to me that it's still there and I, I still get asked about it and I still get invited to conventions and, and it's still a big deal and I'm very grateful to be have been a part of that. Absolutely. Speaking of big deals, the Power Rangers, I mean, that's a big deal. So uh, tell our viewers a little bit about your part in the conception of the Power Rangers? Well, I was part of the creative team at Saban. Um, uh, every so often when there was a show to develop, uh, the, the Owen Haim Saban would, would call his brain trust, the creative guy, we all t talk it out, and then one of us would take on the development of it. And it just kind of happened to be my turn. Um, uh, Haim uh, brought me and development executive, uh, Ellen Levy Sarnoff, into his office, and he showed us this strange Sentai show and explain what he wanted us to do with it, which is to you know cut out all the Asian story and plug in an American story and kind of tie it all together. And my response to him was, "You're out of your mind." Uh, but we did it anyway, and um, and it was a long process. It took about nine months just to get the first script done, uh, so that we could try it this way and try it that way. And and we did the pilot, and the uh, and Fox pretty much bought the show on the set of the pilot before they even finished seeing it. So um, it was, uh, we were scrambling. We had to scramble. We had like 10 minutes to come up with a title. Wow. So where did the title come from? It, it came from a very quick discussion between uh, five or six of us, the network people and Hiam and Ellen and myself, and we were all on the set, second day of shooting on the pilot. And uh, we, we, we had originally called it Dino Rangers, but, but we couldn't use that. And so uh, we were kind of going right around and around. I think Ellen came up with the idea of Power Rangers. And then Haim went, no, no, it's got to have rhythm, ba 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 mighty morphin power. And that's how it came about. It was a quick discussion, and that's how the title came about. That's brilliant. Well, usually the best things come about in those kind of circumstances. Amazing. Also, um, I heard a little bit of online gossip as I was doing my homework on you. <laughs> uh, 
Um, at this particular convention, I think it was last year, they said that you made a special announcement. That I made a special announcement? I wasn't here last year. Oh, not at this one, at the uh, Power Morphin convention, oh, the Power, Power Rangers. Yeah, I, just, I, I, was, I was in the middle of shooting a documentary at the time. Unfortunately, that's had to be put on hold. Oh, no. For reasons I can't discuss. Uh -huh. But uh, but we're hoping to finish it. We got a lot of great footage. I actually went to Tokyo and interviewed the uh, the creators and. Right, you had already started working on this yeah. documentary yeah. about it's the Power Rangers story, pretty much, right? Yeah. So hopefully we'll be able to get it done in the next. To be continued. In the next year or two, it's going to take a while. Okay. So yeah. All right, well, we look forward to hearing that. And what else? Uh, what else new are you working on these days? Well, I, like I said, I just wrapped. We just wrapped production on Gurren Lagann. Uh, which is doing really well on the Sci-Fi Channel, and it's really one of the best animes I've ever gotten to work on. It's it's got a little bit of everything, including a soundtrack to die for, which is what I, I respond to music a lot. So me too. Yeah, and um, uh, I'm currently directing Tweeny Witches for Manga Entertainment, and um, I work with Bang Zoom a lot. Well, it was so nice to meet you. Thank you so much for your time. Keep working hard.